What is up fellow data nerds? In this video, we're going to do an overview of generative AI in IBM's Watson X platform. In other videos, I'll be diving into business centric use cases using Watson X. But for this one, I really just wanna lay the foundation so you can have a better understanding of AI, what Watson X is, and really just what's so important about the AI that you choose for your business. So here's the agenda for this video. First, we'll talk about what generative AI is, We'll get into IBM's approach to AI, then how to access IBM's AI. Finally, just a quick wrap up. So before we get into any IBM specific stuff, let's just do a quick rundown of what generative AI is. Generative AI is the latest innovation in the long history of the AI journey. There was an explosion in popularity around the end of 2022 with ChatGPT. It went from a million users in a week to a hundred million users in just two months, which is pretty crazy. Gardner defines it as AI techniques that learn a representation of artifacts from data and use it to generate brand new, completely original artifacts that preserve a likeness to original data. If you're kind of like me though, and prefer that explain it to me like I'm five version, you can really just think of it as a large language model, taking some existing data and then using that to make something entirely new. So that might be in the form of text, graphics, video, and so on. If we step away from thinking about how we could use it to you know, write a song or create extremely off the wall images, and instead think about how this could be used from a business perspective, we can really start to see how it enables things like semantic search, code generation, email routing, customer service enhancements, improved automation, and much, much more. So let's go just a little bit deeper with an actual use case example. So just imagine your business has this overworked cost center field with these agents and they're just receiving tons and tons of inquiries and spending all this time digging through, you know, all these different data sources all over the place, trying to find all these answers. With AI, you'd be able to do things like implement an intelligent virtual assistant that can answer the majority of the easier questions using natural language. And that really just leaves the difficult ones for your agents, not everything. And then for the times that the agents do get that call with that important message, an enterprise document search platform could pull all of that data together and then provide summarized responses in natural language to their questions without them having to take all that time to dig through mountains and mountains of forms and policies and all that other stuff. And I think that's pretty awesome. And really, it's easy to see why over 80% of enterprises are working with already or planning to adopt generative AI in some form or fashion. All right, now that we know a little bit of history and understand a bit more about what generative AI is, let's talk about IBM's approach to AI, and more importantly, we'll discuss why it's so important to have a careful approach. As it's been shown with ChatGPT many times, it's quite easy to misuse foundation models to produce malicious code or content. And the answers that you receive might be accurate, but they might also contain biases or hallucinations. If your business doesn't have the control or the insights, how can you ensure that your employees and your customers that, you know, it's safe to use and the data that's passed into it's not going to be misused? Essentially, can, can you trust the AI platform that you're using? And are the models and platforms you're using for your business ones that are built with enterprise needs in mind? Or are you just, you know, assuming that the one you're picking is general enough and has enough data points? So sure. Might as well, it's probably gonna work. This is where IBM's approach to AI comes in and really what separates it from the rest of the pack. So for IBM, they have four core and differentiating beliefs regarding AI, that it should be open, trusted, targeted, and empowering. This means that IBM's AI is not gonna lock you into only using certain foundation models or only allowing you to deploy it to, you know, this one specific location or this other specific location. You can trust the accuracy of the output. It's built with businesses and their challenges in mind, and it's empowering to the business by giving you the ability to train, fine tune, and govern the models. And that's something that most enterprises are going to want to do. So in a quick and tiny, but really important nutshell, this is AI built for your business to help you safely achieve your targeted results while working with the models that you want to work with. You can access IBM's AI in many ways. You have products like Watson X Assistant or Orchestrate, which are powered by trusted and business-centric large language models from Watson X. You also have the Watson X platform itself, which is made up of three components. WatsonX.ai, WatsonX.data, and WatsonX.governance. WatsonX.ai is a studio that brings all these foundation and machine learning models into one place where you can train, validate, tune, etc. So let's say you have some application in your business and you want to use the Llama 2 LLM for some generative AI component of that application. 
WatsonX.ai is the studio where you could go to validate the model and then tune it for your business and your challenges. To me, I think the differentiating factor here is having all of this capability and all these models in just one place. WatsonX.data is a data repository based on a lakehouse architecture and it can be used to scale AI workloads for all of your data, wherever that may be. WatsonX.governance is your eyes in the sky to manage enterprise-wide governance processes, control risks, and really just see what's going on with your AI. All right, so single platform, WatsonX. Three components within that platform, AI, data, governance. All three work together to scale and accelerate your AI journey but it's also possible if you need it just to get AI or just data or whatever combination. Okay, it's time for a quick wrap up. So in this video, we talked about the history of AI and what generative AI is. We touched on IBM's approach to worthwhile AI for your business, as well as how to actually access that AI. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like it, hit that subscribe button and follow along for more data-driven and slightly nerdy content. You can also find me by searching Data Nerd Josh on Instagram and TikTok going to datanerdjosh.com or following me on LinkedIn.